What is going on everybody and welcome to part 39 of our machine learning tutorial series. In this video and the coming videos we're going to be talking about mean shift. And mean shift is another clustering algorithm but this time rather than the flat clustering methodology of the k-means clustering algorithm, mean shift is what is known as a hierarchical clustering algorithm. Now among other things what this means for us is that unlike k-means where we had to tell the machine hey we want two clusters or five clusters or whatever, with mean shift and hierarchical clustering, the machine actually figures out how many clusters there ought to be and where those clusters actually are. So to exemplify this, first I'll just draw a really simple data set. And then we're going to have some data points here. Okay. And if you recall with k-means, for example, when we started the algorithm, we just we said, okay, we've got k. Let's say k equals 2. We're going to select randomly 2 or select randomly k feature sets and call those centroids or cluster centers for now. Okay, with mean shift, instead what we do is we say every feature set is a cluster center. So this is a cluster center, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is, and this is. And what you have here is a cluster, never mind. Anyway, so you've got all of these as center clusters. So then what's the next step? So Mean shift has one thing that the scientist might supply, but as we go through it, I'll show you a way that you can kind of determine it automatically. Uh, and that is called the radius. So the radius, also sometimes referred to as the bandwidth, um, but they really are not totally interchangeable. Uh, so basically what's going to happen is you're going to have a radius around a data point. So we're just going to start with one, but understand that this is going to apply to every single data point. So let's, we're going to work first with this data point here, but imagine this process is applied to every single feature set data point, whatever you want to call it. So every data point has this, this bandwidth around it. So let's say this, this feature set that we're working with has a bandwidth and it's like, like this, it would be a perfect circle. So that's your bandwidth. And then, then really your radius is basically this distance, right? All the way around, that's your radius, okay? So the bandwidth is really everything within that radius. And the radius is that distance, okay? So for example, this starting cluster has three feature sets within its bandwidth, which is determined by its radius. So again, people like to interchange those. I really feel like that's not interchangeable. But anyways, I could be wrong. So so each, keep in mind though, again, every single cluster center goes through this process. So this is just for one cluster center. Okay, so then once you have your bandwidth and all the data points within the bandwidth, you're going to remember with like k-means, for example, you're then going to take the mean of all the data points that are within that cluster. So in this case, you've got three data points, what would be their mean? Well, it's probably like right here, okay? So now your new cluster center is actually this point right there, okay? And then with it comes a new bandwidth. Okay, so there's your new bandwidth, okay? And then again, we take all of the feature sets or data points within that bandwidth and then we take the mean of all of those. So that would be basically, right, it would be this one, this one, this one, and this one. And then we take their mean, and I don't know, it's probably something like here, okay? So then you got your new cluster center, which is there, okay? And then, again, you take the bandwidth, which would probably not change too much, but it would be like, you know, like this, okay? And then again, at this point, it would be all of the same data features uh, within that bandwidth and that, uh, or I guess this time maybe within the radius. And so that cluster would not move. And when that cluster center does not move anymore, it is, uh, it's optimized. Okay, it's done. The same thing is going to happen though. Remember, we started this entire process with this data point, right? We said that was a cluster center. So then if we were to do this exact same process with this data point, Knowing what we know from what we went through with like k-means and, um, and, and what you just saw now, what is that new, the second data point, right? What is that data point? Where is that going to have a cluster center? Well, when you run this, it's going to most likely 
uh, within one step reach this exact same cluster center. And what you have there is convergence. Uh, I guess I'll write it all out, convergence. And when you have convergence, you're done, right? So when you have convergence, you just say, okay, well, both of these became the same cluster center, so they are the exact same cluster center. So just even though you started as all data points are their own cluster centers, as you continue to run the mean shift algorithm, you're going to be whittling away cluster centers. And then you're also at the same time going to be slowly moving the cluster center to a point of convergence. And basically, if you recall, kind of like with k-means, once you have a bunch of cluster centers that are done moving, they're fully converged, nothing new is happening, you're done, you're optimized, and you're good to go. Okay, so as you might guess, as you did this to basically all of these other cluster centers, they would all, at least down here, go to that exact same cluster center. And then up here, they would probably all converge about right there, and they would all be within their own little radius there, and you're done. You've got convergence. Now, sometimes that's not going to work uh, like just with a simple radius and bandwidth. And that's kind of what we're going to be showing uh, when we actually go through with Python. But just as a quick example, let's say you've got a data set like this, okay? Uh, this obviously doesn't really appear to have any clusters, but I just wanted to show a really quick example. But with the bandwidths, you're going to have, you might have different levels of bandwidth. So maybe the first level is this, and then you've got a secondary level, which is going to be this, and then a tertiary level like this, and so on. And then the, the, if you find feature sets within this first level, then maybe they have a weight of three uh, assigned to them. And then out here, these are data points that exist, but they only have a weight of two, and then these will have a weight of one. And so that way you're, you're, you're encompassing basically all data points for the most part, or a larger range of data points, but you are penalizing for distance away. You could also penalize in some sort of squared error fashion or something like that. All right, so I'm just gonna show a really quick example here. There's really nothing new being covered here besides maybe 3D graphing. I'm not really sure if we've used that yet, but if you wanna know more about 3D graphing, we haven't talked about that yet, you can check out the Matplotlib series and learn more about it. Mostly I just wanna show a really quick example and some sample code, but really there's nothing new here, so I think it'd be kind of a waste of time to be rewriting this script when we've covered basically all of this stuff. So anyways, we're just creating some starting centers here so that we can create some sample data. These centers are not used in the rest of the code or the mean shift algorithm or anything. It's just simply so we can create this starting sample data. Also, uh, it'll be interesting to compare since this is where the data started from, we can grab the cluster centers and compare what mean shift found to be the cluster centers with what the random data was generated from. And they should be pretty darn close, right? Otherwise something went wrong. So that's that. Um, basically, that's pretty much the only thing I think worthy mentioning, because basically what we're gonna do is we just, we fit to X, whatever X is from make blobs from scikit-learn. We get the cluster centers, which are attributes, the number of clusters, hopefully three. Uh, plenty of colors to choose from. We're just multiplying this list by 10 to cycle through. So in theory, we can find, uh, 70 colors creating the graph 3d graph graphing it scatter show cool okay so let's go ahead and just pop up an example real quick and see what k-means does for us so sure enough uh, we get this beautiful 3d graph and we've got three clusters here beautifully colored and everything got this one little outlier interesting i wonder i wonder which cluster generated this little guy k mean or mean shift says it was the blue group but man does that not look closer to the red in basically all examples. Maybe in this one, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> you guys probably aren't seeing the same thing. Okay, so then we can compare. Uh, so here are the cluster centers. So maybe not in the same order, but we can see this first one, right? We got one, one, five, 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 or one, 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 five, 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 three, ten, ten. Well, this is obviously the one, one, one. Pretty close, there's a little bit of de uh, deviation from that, but not more than would be expected. Cause this is just, these are, centers to start from and then they're just randomly created from there and then you've got uh, 3 10 10 obviously and then this is your 5 5 5 so pretty close to where the random data was you know generated from and probably if we made like I don't know a thousand samples it'd be even closer to those starting numbers so if you're on a laptop or something like that I wouldn't recommend running um, 
<laughs> running this is going to be like a pain on your on your computer. But anyway, so then in this case, uh, we've got now a thousand examples, and here are new clusters. So even closer to one one one, closer to five five five, and even closer to three ten ten. And probably we could do like ten thousand or something. But even this is going to be like probably really hard for my computer to shift around. Sure enough, yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so there's a really quick, simple example of uh, mean shift at work. But again, like kind of like I was trying to explain before, the clustering algorithms are really not so much for, uh, you might use them for visualization, but really they're for like some sort of research, structuring data, that kind of thing. So in the next tutorial, what we're going to talk about is applying mean shift to that Titanic data set that we were working with because we we're under the impression that hopefully it will find two groups, but maybe that's the wrong, uh, the wrong, I suppose, thought on that data set. Maybe that data set actually has five groups or something like this that we haven't really, you know, in our head, we know it should be two groups, but really maybe in reality, these are separable into more groups. Like for example, we already know right out of the gate that there are three classes of passengers on the ship, first, second, and third class, right? <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, so, so maybe three classes is actually what the true, uh, the true number of groups is on the ship, and then from there we can do some more interesting research. And so that's what we're going to kind of start toying with in the next video. So if you have questions, comments, concerns up to this point, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.